Hey there, lovely soul. This is Infinity and welcome to the Evolve Now podcast. I am coming to you today on June 11th, 2021. And I've seen so many ones today. I actually woke up really, really early, worked, went back to sleep and woke up. Uh, and it was one of those like, oh, okay, cats and life like I was so deep then I heard I, I just felt like oh it's kind of late you should look look at what time it is like look at what time it is I remember being very very specifically guided to look at what what time it was so I don't even think I had my eyes open barely yet when I was already reaching for my phone and it was 11 11 on the 11th and I actually also posted about 11 11 yesterday or last night at like midnight, uh, guided to put some information out about the 11s and just get that into the consciousness. And anyway, so today I've just been seeing so many, um, well, repeating numbers in general, but a lot of ones, a lot, a lot of ones. Okay, so here we are uh, the day after the, the new moon. And if you didn't yet do the new moon meditation, why not? What are you waiting for? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But seriously, it was an awesome uh, meeting with the mermaids. And I've really felt that energy. And, um, and then after I did the meditation and pulled the car cards that I did, uh, time and Tide and Sanctuary, it, at three different times the deck was sitting right next to me and I kept opening up like just like going like around half halfway to just cut the deck and see what card lit it was under there and three times in a row I did that. Not like back to back to back but each time I did over the course of um, however long I was sitting here during uh or before the meditation and then after so then uh, then it was like the uh, I, the fourth time <laughs> i actually was like okay what card is this because i was making myself not fully look at it i was just like oh that's the same card like oh that's the same card and it just kept being the same card and then finally on the fourth time I saw the card and it is the return of Aphrodite temple birth of the goddess guidance goddess energy treating as sacred and it's a beautiful card and what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to take pictures I'm going to do the same thing for time and tide and I'm going to do it for these cards that I that I pulled but I'm going to create a blog post on my website that you can go and check out the pictures um, you can also do a google search for them as well but I'm just going to have that for myself so those things tie in because when I do a podcast I don't I I, I don't always um like sometimes I'll I'll put it in the picture of the podcast, but sometimes I'm getting more than one oracle or tarot debt or tarot card. And, um, and anyway, I'm just going to, I'm going to do that. And okay. So then I was picking up the deck and I can't remember exactly how it happened, but I was picking up the deck, like kind of, I kind of had the two parts split because of the return of Aphrodite that card and and I was like trying to put the deck back together and this other card fell out so the first card was card number 13 the return of Aphrodite and it's this beautiful um goddess she's it's actually not a mermaid she has legs she's standing in the water she has dolphins with her she has a white dove and beautiful long blonde like dirty blonde hair um, and she's just absolutely beautiful. She has a key in her right hand that she's holding. She's looking off. She has a shell. She has this beautiful shell necklace. Uh, and these dolphins are looking at us, um, like with kind of like, like one eye, like they're turned kind of. So it's a really beautiful card. And then, so this other card that, that popped out is the number 10 card. 
honor the masculine, respecting men, embracing the masculine divine. So it's really interesting <laughs> that these two cards came out. The return of Aphrodite, the goddess, the birth of the goddess, and then honor the masculine, the embracing the divine, the masculine divine, or we also say the divine masculine. So I am going to today, like I talked about in the, uh, the recording for the new moon yesterday, I feel like I was like, and I have not done this before with other, with other decks. So it's really interesting, um, that I'm being guided to do it with this one, but I just go as guided. And if I feel like real push to do something, I just do it. <laughs> it just makes life easier. So I am going to read the first part of this book that explains a lot about the mermaids and and then I'm going to read about these two cards, The Return of Aphrodite and Honor the Masculine. But first, what I, we're going to do is dive in. I was guided to get into my new archetypes deck, the Wild Unknown archetypes deck. Now this is my second one of these. I was just finally, <laughs> a couple days ago, I was guided to um, buy a second deck. This is the first time I've ever been guided to buy two of the same deck for the only purpose that I really, I've had the deck for like two months or something like this, my first one. And it's, and what, the, like the one reading that's like the signature reading for the archetypes deck is picking from, you know, having the four piles of the different archetype sections, the selves, the places, the tools, and the initiations to have those separated. And then um, you pick from, you pick one of each, and this gives you a really good picture for readings. Um, for yourself and for others and I do a lot of a lot of readings for other people and <laughs> I've had this deck for like two months or so or more and I have yet to combine the deck because I really like it being separate and so finally the other day I was just like yep I'm still keeping it separate and then my guides came through and, w and just suggested why don't you just get a second deck that you will mix up all you will mix you will shuffle all together the tools the, the selves the places and the initiations and you can shuffle them t all together so that's why I got a second deck so I could shuffle all of the archetypes together and I just got this today and I was guided to, um, to pull a few cards from this deck. So I am just kind of separating them out. And it's cool, you, if, you've, if you've gotten your own Oracle deck, they always come in the order of the book. And in, and in order. So if there's 50 cards, it goes 1 to 50. So when you have a, a reading, this is a, like such a different type of deck. So when you have a deck that's separated into sections, not just, you know, most decks are just however many cards they are. They're not partitioned out. This deck is. And so it's just either spend the time whenever you want to, ha to do that reading Oh, look at that. It's 411 right now. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, when you want to do that reading, you have to sit and partition them all out or just leave them, you know, separated. So that's what I've chosen to done. I just leave them separated, but then I never get to work with the deck as a whole, you know, and I want to, I wanted to, it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, I'm not gonna p sit and put all these, oh, no, like, you know, it's just too much to sit and put some like 70 something. There's a lot of cards in this deck. I think there's like, I don't know, I have to look, maybe not 70, but it's a lot, of, it's a lot of cards. So anyhow, I just 
kind of pull them all apart and I'm shuffling them and they're round cards if you've never seen this deck or seen my videos where I use this deck and I've also used them in my videos on, on my YouTube ch channel same thing totally separated out um, and yeah they're they're round cards so they're interesting to work with and the backs of them have this like really trippy pattern like cut up paper kind of black and white kind of messes with my eyeballs a little bit <laughs> um so anyhow we are going to be getting uh i heard three cards maybe more but three cards i keep seeing three cards so i'm going to choose three cards here and this is just all of the cards mixed up together i'm just Kind of getting i like to sometimes just put cards on the table and just have a mountain of cards and just be guided to pull a card that way instead of shuffling and especially these cards are new stiff and round it makes them really hard to shuffle in your hands just being honest here about it so i'm gonna get them back here on the table in a pile and then choose three cards this also makes it easy instead of shuffling like more can pop you're more controlled you can just have your pile of cards on the table or the floor or your bed or whatever whatever wherever you're at wherever it feels good and move them around shuffle them around in a pile until you start feeling the urge like oh let's dig over here is it this card is it that card and just kind of dig around until you are nudged that that is the card so let's or you'll also be like, you'll see a card, you'll move things around, you'll look at that card again, you move things around, there that card is again. <laughs> it's like, or one will just naturally separate or very specifically separate itself from the rest. Or, or as you're moving them, flip over like this one just did. So there's definitely a pick. It's, whoa, it's popping out of my hands, bumping all over the place it is the one card number 30 xxx card number 30 the one and that is a self card so there's our first card <laughs> the number one like i said oh my god hilarious so many ones today <laughs> i actually got the one okay and here's our second card the ocean what so we have like getting into our mermaid oracle here after this and of course the ocean is pulled <laughs> that is hilarious and and i swear i'm not making that up it's swear it is true and here's our third card the forest so we got the one the ocean and the forest card number cards number 30 35 and 36 okay so we're gonna put these cards back ah, all together oh we got a bonus card here what is this the starborn card number three three ones <laughs> Goodness gracious, this picture right here is hilarious to me. Gosh. Okay. So the one, and these are all Roman numerals. So there's an XXX, it's in black and white. Then we have the ocean, XX5, card number 35. And then we have the forest, XXVI, uh, or yeah, I um the forest and then we have i i i the starborn so four cards actually so gonna go right to the one here straight from the book i will read i'm going to be doing some reading here card number 30 uh sorry yeah card number 30 oh and there's a total of yeah 78 cards 
Okay, so card number 30, the one on page 121. That just so happens to be, I was writing about a second time today, I've seen 121 because on my Instagram, I was writing about, it's the last, oh, it's the last card of the selves. Okay. I was writing about, uh, or my latest post, I believe it's my latest post. It is, it says solitude is a gift. And I go into a little bit like, you know, solitude is to connect with yourself, your home, what's in your home, your guides, and especially your guardian angel. And I go into the fact that, you know, my relationship with my guardian angel, Samuel, and how that is and how that's been. And uh, that I have a meditation that I facilitated back in February, actually on Valentine's Day. I always, I never mentioned that, but that was the day that I was, that I was guided to do that meditation. It's just kind of so beside the point, but it was like exactly the point to like give yourself love because it's a body love and meet your guardian angel um, meditation. So it's episode 121. And here we are with the one on page 121. So that's very interesting to me. Okay, here we go. The one non-duality, one love, unis mundus. Our ability to experience this archetype firsthand is limited. It comes in brief and potent moments that we are left to savor for a lifetime. The one is both the energy that unites all living beings and our capacity to sense this intimate union. This archetype eludes us most of our lives, appearing as a concept in a distant, <laughs> distant galaxy. Yet, when we are in the midst of its power, a solemn reverence falls across all the land. We glimpse ourselves in the vastness of all consciousness and are neither small nor large within that field. We are neither important nor non-important. All duality fades away and we are left with what is, the precious knowing that life is a gift and we are both the giver and receiver of this fortune. Oh, I love that so much. When light serves, loves, accepts, resonates. When dark ignores, omits, excludes. <laughs> My cat wants attention. Uh, and go deeper, James Terrell's The Color Inside, the poem Self-Portrait by David White. And it is said that Om is the primordial sound of the universe and that all other mantras are born from it. Simply imagine this possibility. Will Simply imagining this possibility will activate the one. So just sitting and chanting Om. It's a very... Uh, comfortable tone and it's easy for you to like really bring in breath and eat and slowly let it go with that tone so you can really breathe out for a long time just in a oh like that like really long you can really get into that into that tone it feels really good okay the Unus Mundus is a circle representing the unity of existence. It is possible that the beginning, oh sorry, is it possible that the beginning and the end of all things is love? Definitely. <laughs> so there it is. There is the one. Um, our ability to experience this archetype firsthand is limited. It comes in brief and potent moments that we are left to savor for a lifetime. That you're in it and you're out of it and you are it and it is you. Um, connectedness with the one. Uh, and that's also very reminiscent of what that number represents in angel, angel numbers and numerology. It's that, it's the beginning, it's, it has 
its powerful and its singularity. It is the the start, the beginning, the all in itself. Um, so from one, it duplicates to two, the one one, doubling everything that's so potent, potent and powerful with just the one. And that is what creates the three, the one, two, three. And and the those the one and the one duplicate to the three. Creation exists then. And and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna go more than that because I am told that we're gonna jump to the starborn card number three. So we go from card number thirty to card number three for the selves. The starborn is after the mother and the father. So one and two, like I said, the beginning with the create the creators, the one and the two, and then you have the three, the starborn. The divine child, the star child, the destined. An elusive yet radiant aspect of the self, the starborn archetype points to the cosmic spark of light that arrives with each being at birth. The moment the newborn crowns, whether vaginally or sur surgically, the royal stars above are said to constellate in a unique shape that maps our path in the world. The idea of destiny is controversial, yet the starborn naturally feels a sense of destination and purpose, aiming itself towards a future that is beyond the mundane. When this card appears, travel back to your birth story for clues and insight. What did you desire when you were young? Practice seeing your life from a mythic point of view rather than as a series of logistics. Read the story of the three fates and envision yourself born under the stars with a unique destiny. And when light, all right, trusting, vibrant, and aimed, and when dark, feeling of misalignment, loss of longing. Go deeper, tripping over joy by Hafez, Shakespeare's star cross lovers. Have your chart read. Study your const constellated shape. Ask questions. What does the process conjure in you? Faith or mistrust? What would happen if you saw the galaxy as your ally? And when this card appears, don't be surprised if you receive a surge of desire for a long lo of a long lost dream, one you haven't visited since childhood. Let this desire shake you up. Oh wow. So tapping back into that inner child from that perspective being able to connect with and work from the soul live from that from that soul slash star um point of view that higher point of view the starborn whenever i see this card or think about the starborn i literally think about a star being born like having this perspective of a very high dimensional being somebody who has incarnated many many times one that has a very clear understanding of duality and love and patience and has you know lived in a lot of different circumstances in in their carnations and or incarnations I should say and um especially in these lifetimes that there's a very specific like like it talks about the chart very specific chart <laughs> or map to like point a point b point c and all the very specific places and themes that need to be lived in these lifetimes Th this time for humanity is so important and it's so important that those of us that are here now um, really understand it from a deep level and a high perspective like that so we can really do what we're meant to do and see it the way it's meant to be seen 
Okay, so there we have the Starborn. Next, we're going to go to the Ocean, card number 35. Um, oh, there. The ocean, the unconscious, the depths, the incomprehensible. The power of the ocean is unmatched. To step into its salty waters is to step into the unknown. By its sheer volume, the ocean represents the unconscious, all that is beyond our understanding. We cannot live within the ocean. We cannot claim it, manage it, or own it. It rejects our every attempt to dominate nature. Yet, amid its overwhelming power, it calls to us, inspires us, and invigorates our life on land. It dissolves the little us into the big us when the energy of the ocean is present. There is change stirring that is beyond any change you've known before. The ego must dissolve. The saline swells work on your very cells, your fibers, your deepest underlying beliefs. Like Aphrodite. <laughs> okay. Like Aphrodite, we rise from the ocean's froth, a new being. Life is change. Let the wave crash. Wow. So the ocean card, not only is it thematically on point because we're getting into the mermaids, we're going to read all about the mermaids here in a second from Lucy Cavendish in her Oracle, but we pull the ocean card and it literally talks about Aphrodite. So we have the return of Aphrodite card. Oh, look at that. It's card number 13 and the ocean is on page 133. These are two separate decks. Okay. Just taking inventory here. <laughs> so, when light, deeper than deep, big dreams, discovery. When dark, uh, sub subdued, drowned, polluted, unpredictable. And go deeper, Shakespeare's The Tempest. Uh, Jill Cotts, The Raft of Medusa. Or The, the Raft of Medusa. And the ocean displays every emotion without shame. To witness its glassy moonlit surface and its unforgiving storms is to know the full spectrum of the human experience. Definitely. Oh my goodness. Steady waves touch their surface. Get in the water. No matter where you live, each drop is part of the whole. The ocean is in every tear. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, when I was reading this, um, it talks about that it says, when the ocean is present, there is a change stirring that is beyond any change you've known before the ego must dissolve the saline swells work in on your very cells your fibers your deepest underlying beliefs like aphrodite we rise from the ocean's froth a new being life is changed let the wave crash oh my god i love that so much aside from the synchronicities here that are just layered um <laughs> <laughs> kind of ridiculous um magical and so deep this is definitely we just had our our new moon yesterday there was in a, uh, a ring of fire eclipse that I, I i just i kept thinking about all all day and, and night like i just did did not have the capacity to 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 feel into that energy but I, I did later on in the day in the evening and it was like it was such an interesting feeling it was like being in the ocean or with the ocean but not in it in a boat and I don't know how else to describe this feeling with the new moon and with the um the solar eclipse 
the ring of fire solar eclipse. It was just that, that is just the best way I could describe it. It's like being, being in it, being on it, being with it, but then also being separate from it at the same time. Because like, it was like most of my focus was with the new moon. New moon energies was just what was coming at me. Like it didn't even register that there was a, a, a ring of fire eclipse until I was told. So it was like, oh, okay, well, I'm definitely meant to know that and put that together. And I'm like, why didn't I, why didn't that come to me earlier or sooner? Like it did months ago. And then when I looked up eclipses a couple weeks ago, it was like, that just, just washed right over me. It was like all about the total eclipse in December, December 4th. It was not about this ring of fire eclipse even though it's very potent and it happening on the new moon at this at the same day is very of course energetically powerful in a really big way um that these two events are simultaneously were t simultaneously going on and um be and possible because of, of that so there's there's those those conditions and connections that you know must be made and it's kind of so i'm looking at the return of aphrodite card and honor the masculine card and it's like they're they're next to each other and you'll see if you look at the pictures um but they're they're not looking at each other aphrodite is looking off to the left here and this divine masculine merman he's he's all into himself <laughs> he's in a wave and his arms are outstretched and his eyes are closed and his head is back like he it's just him like it's just her but they're right next to each other and it's really interesting the 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 colors in this aphrodite card is like these beautiful golds and yellows and then in the masculine card there's like these cool blues that the ocean can can have and it's interesting like it talks about the beginning of this card how it can there can be the the glassiest surface on the ocean where you can see like the reflection of the moon and the stars of the sun so so clearly it's like it's barely moving and then at the same time the ocean can just be just the the strongest force in the world obviously just like the, it's just talking about as well just so um chaotic and wild and furious uh, but in any event uh this ocean energy is really really intense it talks about going to the water any water even if you can't go to the ocean and this has been and is a theme water is always something that i talk about i talk about i talked about it yesterday in the meditation um uh, recording so i'm not going to reiterate that but it's just really important to work with and use the element of water as much as you can soak in it bathe in it go into the rivers streams lakes creeks <laughs> um ponds of course the ocean um anywhere that that you can be in water and really connect with the element um sometimes even like i'll just be prompted i have a bottle a glass bottle of water that i spray on my i use it in my food i use it on my plants it's just water <laughs> it's all it is so it's like if i need a little bit of water in my in my cooking i'll just use that i'll spray my plants with it i spray my i i keep a little um instead of killing fruit flies i have them contained and i spray water in their little habitat so they have water i just use water all the time but i'll also be guided to just like spray it up into the air and just let it fall on me just like a mist you know and it'll just oh, it feels so good and again it's just water there's nothing else in it and it's just the element of water sprayed into the into the atmosphere into the air the the element that takes up every little space that anything else doesn't is where air is and just like in the middle of my kitchen just spray spray water up and just and and that is like the message here it's like connecting with water if it's tiny and minuscule like that or diving in the ocean 
both are relevant and necessary. Okay, next and last card before we get into the mermaid business is the forest. So two, I think it's, oh, the very next card. That's right, it's 35 and 36. And that's not because they were like right next to each other. I had really pulled all the cards and had a mountain and swirled them all around. I don't know if the mic could pick all that up, but the way that, that they came out um, being right next to each other, the ocean and then the forest, um, even though they weren't actually positioned next to each other is pretty interesting. So here we are now on pages 34 and 35, the forest. The woods, the thicket, the jungle. Consider for a moment your earliest memory of the forest. It's likely it included all the mythic dynamics of this archetypal space. A little fear, a little enchantment, perhaps losing your way, perhaps discovering a secret mystical treasure. Such is the magic of the forest. It requires first that you enter it and then that you get lost within it. You may think there is a path to lead you straight through, but soon enough you'll be on what is known as the pathless path. There are tricksters here, dense foliage and entanglement, but equally present are the glimmers of fairy light and friends among the trees. You're on an adventure now and there's no turning back. So embrace the dim light and the moving shadows, whether literal or imaginal, brave the forest and get lost getting found. Oh, I love that. Huh. Okay. So when light magic abounds, childlike wonder, adventure, when dark concealment, density, savagery, go deeper. The opening three lines of Dante's Alinear's Inferno. Dante's Inferno. First three lines of the story. And the hunter, the maiden, the crone, and this shaman make regular appearances in the forest. Don't be surprised if these cards come up together. Let the narrative reveal itself. And if you get out of the forest without feeling lost, you are only in a little grove of trees. The great archetypal forest requires we spend at least one night frightened for our lives. <gasps> That's funny. Okay, so what I'm really picking up here with the forest is like, Again, it doesn't matter where you are to connect with this ocean energy, this big change, this, you know, being born again kind of, kind of energy. Um, and to let the magic of it, to get lost in it. So the same way, and to this whole... Um, So, but equally present are the glimmers of fairy light and friends among the trees. You're on an adventure now and there's no turning back. So that along with, um, there is change stirring that is beyond any change you've known before. The ego must dissolve. So those two energies together, it's like, a really awesome message for this the energy of the one and the starborn combined so these energies these these four together all coming all we put them all together the one the starborn the ocean and the forest um the one is <clears throat> being in it, being feeling that one, being part of that oneness. Um, and then the starborn is that di divine knowing purpose mission. And to be that, and like it said about the forest with the, with um, what was it? The healer, the, the hunter, the maiden, the crone and the shaman make a regular appearance in the forest. And that's because those archetypes 
have this innate understanding of change and having to keep going back and and revisiting and and re-examining and doing again kind of business and and that there's like new a new layer coming something else to <clears throat> unravel um another yeah another peak kind of thing okay so there we go with the archetypal cards oh excuse me uh for this reading the one the ocean the forest and the starborn really really interesting and i'm already super stoked that i was guided to get a second deck to be able to shuffle all together and if this first one is really so amazing with this um with the cards that came out with these two other cards that were already out the return of aphrodite and honor the masculine and we are going to get into that right now i am thinking of taking seven wonders what and where is that book seriously Kitty, I'm you're seriously. Oh, there it is. Why in the heck is it all the way over there? Okay. One of those you stick something somewhere that you never stick anything, and then you like you can't find. It's like behind me. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so getting into the mermaid oracle here we're gonna start with at the very beginning um on page seven with the introduction and i've read ahead here and i can totally <laughs> relate with her story here um i didn't read most of what i'm gonna read with you but i did read the beginning here and i was like oh that is hilarious because i definitely had the exact same feelings and on top of that when I got older I was in high school and I had my job at Blockbuster Video whenever I worked um it was just the Little Mermaid 100% of the time so I can recite that movie <laughs> front to back back to front and all the songs because I love the Little Mermaid and I kind of felt I felt like that I felt like I was just totally out of place and I didn't have a voice. And that also like just things were just magical all around me, if not difficult to comprehend. <laughs> so I could really relate to the Little Mermaid. But anyhow, here we go with the introduction to the Oracle deck called Oracle of the Mermaids by Lucy Cavendish. Okay. It seems both a long time ago and as if it happened just yesterday. I was a little girl, my legs wrapped in cloth, tied together to form a mermaid tail. With my strange little patchwork tail, I would dive into the liquid blue and swim underwater for as long as I could, wriggling from my middle in the way I had seen dolphins swim. One length of the pool to begin with, then two, nearly three i worked my way up by to holding my breath for a long time my tummy muscles grew lean and strong but all the time i was so frustrated and puzzled why oh why could i not breathe underwater for i was i believed with every part of me that i could feel mermaid trapped feel a mermaid trapped in a land of air I have told this story countless times now in workshops and talks and in books like The Lost Lands and The Book of Mermaid Magic, co-authored with Serene Connolly. 
And every time without fail, women and men come one by one to share with me the same story. They tied their legs together. They dived into the beach breaks and backyard pools with the same thought I had. They all believed they were mer people. When is this endless allure of the creature who is half of the ocean, half of the air? Why does she, because it is most often she, appear in every culture that has connections with water across this blue and green planet? And what can she, with her comb and her long wild hair, her lovely song and her awesome strength, teach us now as we touch the truth of who we could be? I love the mermaids, whose song I have heard, whose notes I have sung back in my attempt to let them know I love them and wish to be with them. I have seen them and they are all so exquisite, as diverse as the creatures of the great mother ocean herself. Twin-tailed, selky sleek, dolphin enchanting, nautilus feelers, mer creatures, are complex and very different to the beings of land. They live within a different element. They need not breathe as we do. They experience weightlessness, and if they are cast ashore, the weight of gravity and air can crush them alive. These magical creatures with the head and torso of a man or woman and the body tail or tail of a fish, dolphin, or whale live within the waters of this world, and their and so there may be more of them than there are land creatures and elementals. There is, after all, twice as much sea to land on this blue-green planet. <laughs> okay. The healing powers of merfolk. Mermaids are beings who show us how to love ourselves. Put most simply, this is because they love themselves without guilt, fear, or hesitation they teach us how we can celebrate our sensuality they revere the feminine and the they glory in our fertility our desires our beauty and our instinctuality they ask us to sing our song again Mermaids teach us how to connect deeply with our emotionality, a trait typically spoken of as feminine and often regarded as a weakness. With the help of the mermaids, we are able to feel deeply without the negative impact of conditional shame. Within these pages and on these cards, you will find messages and lessons from these beings of the great oceans and waterways who teach us how to connect with the healing power of our emotions, our psyche, and how to quench the great thirst so many of us have for true love. For they are romantic, these beings, and they help understand Wait, sorry. <laughs> For they are romantic, these beings, and they help understand how deeply we yearn to love, how loving is natural, and that we can learn to express and experience love healthfully and in accord with our own destiny, nature, and truth. Mermaids are marvels of endurance and independence, and they inspire us to practice our spirituality. With their sea ritual, their oceanic magic, and their profound connection to moon cycles, they embody a graceful acceptance of flow and abundance to embrace the highs, the lows, and the spaces in between. The mermaids, their moods, even their rages and tempers their boundless capacity for kindness and love and freedom show us how to live fully once again like the wild things we are like the shining beings we can be once again they are the mothers of the sea the great ones whose ancestors include the santeria goddess Yem Yemiya, who gives birth to all from her belly, including all the saints, and to divination and to knowledge and language. They are the marrow who release men from their soul cages to truly swim and be free in the watery element. 
the Selkies, who share their lesson to be holy within one world at a time, to not split the self, to reclaim the skin you were born into, and let no one take your true wild self captive. The mermaid can lead us sometimes down into the deepest of awareness, and while this is often a place where we have kept truths hidden from ourselves, it is worth visiting that underwater cave full of bones and remains of who we once were and once we once and what we once did in order to understand our own selves, in order to learn, not to repeat and to discover the goodness that lies within those events and circumstances. And mermaid history. It was said that the very un-Irish St. Patrick, he was Romano-British and hated the Irish fiercely, not only cast the snakes out from Ireland, he turned pagan women into mermaids. He declared they they were soulless and never to be trusted the mermaid though can never die and she is the life-giving element of water itself and her song reminds us that we drink deep from the cauldron of life and have truly lived until relatively recently merfolk were utterly believed in with sightings by italy's christopher columbus and england's Henley, sorry, Henry Hudson, famed explorers who recorded their sightings meticulously and, uh, and other reports in various natural journals. In 1830, off the coast of Scotland, a mermaid's body was found washed up and was buried after examination and verification by a local doctor. Desmond Morris, a cultural anthropologist of our times, believes that they are indeed real, a kind of water ape, a missing link in the evolutionary chain. When we look at the historical representations of the beautiful mermaids, we see that they... We see the way... Sorry... <laughs> We see that the way in which they are portrayed says so much more about the time and its attitudes than it tells the truth about mermaids themselves. They have been portrayed as sexually rapacious and predatory, a flesh-eating bisexual monsters. Recent films such as She Creature, Peter Pan, and Dragon are prime examples of this enduring worldview of mermaid, who are self-obsessed, indulgent, untrustworthy, and utterly feminine. Why is this so? Mermaids and Sensuality Mermaids encapsulate all of our fears, desires, temptations, and repressed feelings about sex. As such, they are wonderful indicators of where our psyches are at, re at regarding our own sexuality. In fact, mermaids were used as a kind of cultural repository of every negative or frightening feminine quality, vanity, sexuality, desire, and independence. Even our smell and our taste were given descriptions through the mermaid and in writing about them the and witches the church was able to express their fears of the feminine body our ability to conceive just state another body bleed and love deeply which were seen as being profoundly disturbing suspect qualities with our independence and fleeting attachments the mermaid shows us how to maintain who we are within it intimate physical relationships her unabashed beauty and sexuality and her unselfconscious allure shows us that we are desirable and powerful simply for being alive conversely if we feel repelled or fearful of the sexual mermaid who is happy in her skin we may have a wounded aspect of our sexuality if we feel an affinity only with a mermaid who gives up herself in order to be joined with a lover, we would do well to sincerely examine just how much of ourselves we change when we are with a partner. This mermaid syndrome can extend to women or men who change their appearance, manners, interests, or religion to be with a lover. 
There, the mermaid's presence in our lives requires that we become closer to who we truly are and honor our own truths instead of adopting and adapting to another's, sacrificing who we are in order to be with another, another who may not require that we change at all. The kinship aspect between humans and merfolk is also a fascinating one. Again, as with other elementals, sexual interaction between humans and the merfolk has led to the merging of the two. Some families in Scotland and Ireland still claim descent from mermaids. Families of the Oakney Isles, who often have a genetic trait of slightly webbed hands, claim it as theirs due to an ancestor who fled from her unhappy marriage into the arms of a hands handsome selkie, a type of merman who is able to shapeshift between human and seal forms. The Native American tribe called uh, Penobscot also claimed descent from a mermaid. Others believe that the mermaid or merman is our original Atlantean form when we were both water and land creatures able to breathe and live in both elements with ease. Oh, and that's on page 11. <laughs> oh, too funny. Okay, so... um. Then we have the symbols of mermaid. The tools the mermaid has been gifted with perf perfectly illustrate her gifts to us. While working with them, you may come upon one or more of her magical possessions, which are often kept in a treasure chest. Comb. Her comb represents the precious and sacred nature of caring for our own physical selves. In acknowledging that our bodies deserve time and reverence, there is a ritualistic element to all beauty routines that can be lifted out of the mundane and commercial world and into the sacred, making our bodies an honored temple which we love and respect and demonstrate gratitude for. By honoring the body, we honor mostly deeply the god and the goddess and the spark of life itself oh my gosh so true and that was another thing that i thought about today and i wrote about today which is the body love and meet your guardian angel meditation that i facilitated back in february so to honor the body to love the body okay next hair the mermaid also suggests to us that we need to see the strength and fem femininity and in being overtly female. Her long hair is an emblem of strength, her sexuality wondrously intoxicating and potent. There is nothing faint-hearted about her, yet she shows us the power in passivity, a magical paradox of sex magic. Mirror. I had a dream a long time ago where I swam down, down beneath the buildings and streets of the huge, cruel city into an enormous cave-like bathroom. Once there, I joined a group of women staring into an enormous mirror that covered the wall. In my dream, my face did not look right, and so I began to peel away at it, and an enormous section of skin was removed. Below, there were scars and angry wounds unhealed, which I'd simply covered up. At the time, the dream upset and disturbed me, but as I wrote about it in my book of Shadows and Light, I came to understand it. My dream was in an underworld bathroom, a home of the myrrh, and in this dream, I had been shown my true self, the self I was hiding from the world and from myself. In this strange way, the mermaids worked their magic and my healing journey could begin with honesty and by seeing who I truly was at that time. Their mirror can show you many things. Other times, other people, the future, the truth of the past, but the most valuable aspect of a mermaid mirror can show you is what is hidden to the eye. The mermaid's mirror is what we all gaze into when we work with these cards for divination, healing, manifestation, and to grow our self-knowledge and self-love. Cups. Cups symbolize the grail, filling up, being receptive, allowing others to give to you. They also represent the womb, fertility, matriarchal lines, cauldrons, the ocean, and bodies of waters like lakes. 
When reading with this deck, the mermaids strongly recommend you work with a simple chalice with water you have collected and blessed for the purpose of, re of a reading. Tail. The kind of tail a mermaid possesses will tell you a great deal about what kind of creature she is so look carefully her tail will give you many insights not only into the kind of mermaid you are working with but the type of energy you have drawn to you look at her tail does it end with one or two or two tails is it scaled what color is it how strong and supple does it appear to be all will give you clues as to the nature of the merfolk you are working with shells seashells are often worked with by the mermaids they love the little creatures who dwell within them and know they have many healing properties and magical powers the creatures gift the mermaids their shells once they have passed from the physical world and so you may see mermaids working with crowry for prosperity and fertility or with scallops for beauty and femininity if you see a mermaid working with a shell it could be a wonderful opportunity for you to connect with these beautiful energies too and keep and learn more about their distinct energies powers and messages um i love shells i have so many shells i've been collecting shells buying them or or finding them on the sand at the beach or pulling them from the ocean as i'm guided or whatever um and however they come to me i love shells and i really suggest if you don't have a collection of shells at your um in your space all around your space in your home um please start acquiring seashells and abalone and pearls anything of the sea okay kinds of mermaids there are many kinds of mermaids found within the fresh and salt waters of this magical green and blue planet and many of them appear in this deck via the beautiful art of selena french uh, some of these types of mermaid include selkies. Selkie is a Scots Gaelic word from the Orkney Isles of far northern Scotland that simply means seal. Tales of the selkie are found throughout much of northern Europe. They are especially so associated with cold climate islands in areas as diverse as Scotland, Iceland, Scandinavia, and Newfoundland. Selkies move between two forms, that of a human and that of a seal, and have become quite well known thanks to the popularity of a beautiful film like The Secret of Roan Inrish, a story of two children with a selkie mother in northern Scotland. Although selkies appear in popular culture, culture predominantly as female, there are also selkie men. And Murrows. On the Western Isle, Ireland, the, the sea and the tide pools overflow with the compassionate energies of mermaids whose purpose is to rescue souls, awaken us to love, and walk between the worlds. Those mermaids are known as the Murrows, and they are Ireland's own shape-shifting maidens of the sea. The word marrow come from the Gaelic Murray, the sea, the ung, the maiden they are renowned for their kindness to sea creatures and to men trapped in soul cages they have beautiful flowing red hair and are sometimes said to wear red caps and melusinas the powerful beings sprang from the freshwater lakes rivers and pools of europe and are able to move through various forms from human women to tailed twin-tailed mermaid to water dragon they require respect and privacy and are associated too with the isle of avalon they are able to help us build they assist their human lovers and husbands by creating manifesting castles overnight they are said to hold a golden key within their mouths which unlocks the doors to all secrets and morrigans often known as primarily as the priestesses of the isle of avalon in Brittany, they are also known as water spirits with tales of sea creatures who keep large underwater cities garden sea kelp beds and can conjure up floods to rec to reclaim land stolen from them 
Women in Brittany often feel they have some of this blood. They love the sea and cannot live too far from their waters. Okay, and why we must connect with water. Water is the life bringer to the entire planet. Her rivers, ponds, great lakes, pools, streams, creeks, waterfalls, and wells. Water is our lifeblood, and within its molecules are the memories and feelings of the planet herself. Water sources feed the air with oxygen and nutrients and brings to us food and life itself. From the womb of the great freshwater lakes, the great saltwater seas, from these cauldronic depths comes life. Oceans and saltwater people. The saltwater aspect of the mermaids is extremely important to their magic. While water is the element that symbolizes cleansing, purification, and the quenching of thirst, saltwater is a variation on this element. Its qualities are to cleanse, to purify, to draw out impurities, to flavor our lives, to harmonize us, and to create the mineral richness that is the bedrock of fertility. Blood in our wombs and at menstruation. It is also salty. <sighs> Seawater also enables us to float it is more buoyant than fresh water <clears throat> excuse me it is more buoyant than fresh water and more difficult to move through it is more complex cleansing and sometimes stronger than fresh water we cannot drink it so there is an element of mistrust between many humans and salt water although it sustains life of so many other creatures and offers us humans so very much in the form of nourishment this complexity and lack of clarity does not make the mermaid's element deceptive, as some think. Rather, it makes us question what we assume to be true and to taste before we drink deeply. Water also represents the unconscious, our urges, desires, instincts, and psychic abilities. Salt water represents these abilities taken to a very high vibratory degree. Like the ocean or the movement of a great river, the surface of a dark lake between mountains, the mermaid has many moons and many forms. She is not always calm and peaceful or seductive and sensual. At times she is stormy, unbridled, released, a wild creature, temp temp temptuous and raging. The force of the mermaid is so very powerful. You can feel her unleash your pent up potential and unbuckle the shackles that have led you back emo that have held you back emotionally. I feel deeply that somehow connecting to the mermaid within is about darkness and light and great extremes and beauty. It is about nature and the depths of ourselves and the tranquil still places we also inhabit it is our ferocity and primarily it is our compassionate nurturing we are complex and we are divine and in our own primal natures is something of the divine mermaids in our own primal selves are to be respected people who see them as little creatures to be mocked or women to be seduced or seductresses to be feared or sexual beings to be called harsh derogatory names are not only losing the part of the world the mer being that the mer being inhabits they are losing a part of their own soul the tides the moon helps cr create our wise teachers for us humans are the tides not a profound lesson in the inevitable changing of all things of all environments sending us the message that there is an ebb and flow to all things natural cycles that we too flow with tides and cycles can teach us so much they are a study of how we must learn to shift our expectations each day. The tides are constant and yet they are ever changing. Nothing stays exactly the same at the seashore, but the tides get as close to a repeating cycle as is possible ev once every 19 years. 
the time it takes the moon and the sun to do their complete cycle with each other. It is no coincidence that these 19 year cycles were the period of study for the druids of the sea kingdoms of Cornwall, Brittany, the Isle of Man, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. And mermaids and moon cycles. I went over this in the meditation video, but I'm going to go over it here too. One magical practice the mermaids will almost certainly encourage you with is connecting to the cycles of the moon. Here is a simple guide to moon phases, their timing, and their powers. Full moon, high tide of power, amplifying and creative. Waning moon, withdrawing, a sucking and pulling impact. Dark moon, a time to go within and soul scry, revelations from within at this time. New moon, a new moon cycle begins time to begin your activation of intentions and waxy moon new growth continued action and results will come about and i did tell you guys that yesterday i actually is when i received this deck on the new moon it was definitely not planned by me i did order the deck a couple days ago and really didn't even think about like oh is it going to come on the new moon just really just honestly just kind of went over my head to be honest um but I was kind of woken up out of a sleep state very specifically to get online and order this deck and and that was really interesting so anyway um this deck this mermaid deck came on the new moon it was the first time I used it was on the new moon so yeah <laughs> okay Mermaids and the moon have a strong relationship. Did you know that there are two daily tides which are directly affected by the moon's field of, field of gravity? We notice the water's response to the moon and sun's gravity, but the earth, the mountains, and the glaciers too feel her magnetism. So important important were these cycles to our ancestors that our language was built around natural cycles for example there are no words for time in old galaic there are only words for wind sea weather cycles and moon changes and the word tide is scots gaelic 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 in origin in most places there is a delay between the phases of the moon and the effect on the tide spring tides fall two days after the moon phase Th this is fascinating to me does this mean that in real terms we here on earth believe sorry excuse me receive the full impact of the moon some two days after seeing its light radiate to the earth the biological cycles of all sea creatures and intertidal creatures, those who live in the liminal shores, and we humans too, occur in multiple multiples of tide times. Gestation and hatching is timed to the lunar cycle and to tidal rhythms perfectly. In human women, our menstrual cycle matches the cycle of the lunar tide cycle. And her question about like whatever the moon is doing it doing and feeling it days later i sometimes i'll feel the power of a full oh that was interesting i'll feel the power of a full moon a couple days before it even hit and then a couple for that day and then a couple days after and even the same thing with the new moon and the um that what I call the 50 50 moon where it's half dark and half light too that has a very specific energy to it as well that is the um the waxing moon okay so continuing on why are mermaids sometimes mistrusted Mer creatures of all kinds are often misunderstood and trivialized, yet they are among the most complex of the elementals. A magical creature with the head and torso of a man or woman and the body or tail of a fish or sea creature. They live primarily beneath the sea and are guardians and protectors of women's sexuality and are associated with play, delight, beauty, and sensuality. But they have many gifts that are powerful and strong, which are often overlooked and which will be explored deeply within this powerful deck 
Among their many skills are the ability to predict storms and future events, and some can even grant wishes, and they can help us free ourselves from restrictive ideas, places, and people. They are great teachers of wisdom and knowledge, and they can also replenish our physical energy as well as refreshing and renewing our spirits. <clears throat> I need some tea. Often in films like Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and Peter Pan or the Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, mermaids are depicted as dark and dangerous beings, almost vampiric, echoing the mistrust of the fairy beings that often surface in popular culture and goes unquestioned. Dark merc are oft thought to be rapacious, deceitful, sexually vocarious, faithless, and most harsh of all, luring humans to their death by drowning with their attractions, with their song, seductresses, and destroyers. There are no doubt merfolk who have encountered the worst of humanity and have decided never again to trust the people of the air. And other mer merfolk wear the glamour of the dangerous ones to protect themselves from us. Some have decided that yes, it is better for us humans to fear them and to stay away from them. But for others, they feel the fear has led to humans raping the ocean and vo voraciously taking from the sea mother as we live less and less in balance with nature and her infinite wonders. Some of the so-called dark mermaids do not live in the wild, beautiful oceans and freshwater lakes. They have taken on the un- Evitable task of dwelling in sewers beneath the cities and water tables beneath the land, clearing polluted waterways in agricultural areas, rescuing dolphins and whales in seas where they are cruelly hunted. All the time they are cleansing, clearing, and assisting so many, best as they can. Perhaps the ones we call dark are the ones we took most from, the ones who wish for us to leave them alone for a time. Oh, that makes me sad. Like tapping into that energy is really quite a bummer. <laughs> Actually, I don't like it. Ugh. Yeah, misunderstood. I'm hearing misunderstood, misrepresented, um, fearful humans, that sort of thing. Okay, how to connect with mermaids. You can easily be, begin to connect and bond with mermaids, no matter where you live on this beautiful blue and green planet. I find it works so very well to make an offering to them so they can learn to trust me and see that I mean what I say, that my action and intent are intertwined. An offering can be of your time, your energy, and it can be made in many forms. I so encourage you to consider during doing this. An offering shows you are serious about creating a link between you and the being or the element you are offering your energy to. And this dedication will have its reward in future and further blessings and in intimacy and in understanding. Gathering litter and human debris along the shore or anywhere near a body of water is a wonderful offering to the mer peoples. You may wish to take a bag with you to specifically collect litter and dispose of it through recycling and thought and thoughtful best ways. It is no chore but a joy to do this. It lightens us and makes us feel happy to be a part of the clearing the solution. Do not be afraid of the sea, of the great lakes, of the deep fast flowing rivers, but do respect them and know and learn of their ways. Ask the water and her mer beings for information. Watch, listen, give them your time. In return, they will grant you wishes, dreams, and delight as well as powerful clearings, visions, and connections with all of the water creatures, from the smallest fish to the playful dolphins to the mighty whales. If you are nowhere near a body of water, you may wish to consider making an offering to an organization that works directly with clearing the seas of human hunters, like sea shepherds or local conservation groups. May all your interactions with the sea, with the waters, with the wells, and the shining lakes, and their merfolk be blessed. 
<sighs> okay. And we're almost done here. I think I've read everything I intended to read. Okay. Signs the mermaids are with you. You may hear the sound of water, a little like a seashell is being held to your ear, even though no seashells are near you. And I have to say, this has happened to me several times where all of a sudden I'll feel, I'll hear rushing water. And I do have like right behind my place here, a, um, a drain, um, cause I live in the mountains. So when it snows and, um, and that starts to melt and, you know, we get a lot of rain, that sort of thing. I'll hear this cause it's like a rushing river right in my backyard. Um, but I'll hear that sometimes when the circumstances are not, <laughs> you know, that's not actually happening. So I'll be like, what is that? Like all of a sudden I'm hearing, so I'll go back there and then like I try to find it and I just can't find it. But I hear rushing water. It's like really, really strong. Okay. Anyhow. Um, you may feel a growing concern for for and connection to the creatures of the oceans and the waterways of the world and feel like you must absolutely get into water even if it is to have a long lingering bath each day you may find yourself wearing colors of blues and greens of coral and pearl and find yourself singing snatches of songs without words from time to time you could feel great love for others have an urge to grow your hair very long and have a growing interest in sensuality dance and sacred sex Swimming and forms of exercise that take place in the water may call to you, as will places on the planet where the mermaids live to dwell. They can often come to you in dreams, and your emotions may surge up under the influence of the mermaids. Dreams of Atlantis, Lemuria, shape-shifting into sea creatures, or great journeys across or underwater or to sacred island. Islands of the Celtic lands may also surface when the mermaids are seeking to reach you, to heal emotions and encourage you to enjoy your experience as a human being this lifetime. And this last part here talks about what it's like to work with these cards. And then this is the last part before we get into these cards. When to work with this deck. These are wonderful, wonderful cards to work with you if you f wish to find out more about your love life, emotionality. Emotionally, they connect easily and deeply and can see right through the situation with eyes that shine with compassion and hold up their magical mirror so you too can finally see the truth. They can assist you in your own love life questions and are very, very helpful when seeing clients who wish for information about their emotional lives. They are very emotional, so be prepared for them to bring up your own repressed feelings. Tears are not unusual when reading with them, but neither is joyous laughter and feelings of happiness and delight. They will demand honesty of you, and for those of you that are that are those you are reading for, it's a little bit like there is nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. When you work with these cards and the mermaids whose energy is channeled through them. When you work with these cards, it may be very helpful to have a seashell or a simple chalice with water you have blessed present. Often we work with candles during readings, but the reflective surface that water forms will put the magical mirror of the mermaids right at the heart of your readings and bring about cleansing, quench the emotional thirst of people seeking help and give you a feeling of joy and weightlessness and grace. More often than other decks, you will find these cards to be empathic, compassionate, emotive, and kind. They have been created with and charged by watery moonlit magic of the mermaid realms. They are true oracles. They see to the heart and deliver what must be known for you to understand your own emotions, your relationships, and your journey into true romance. Each of these cards holds a healing energetic pat pattern within which will be released to you when you read the message and gaze upon the image. Always make an offering before reading. If reading for another, ask them to make an offering. Read out of doors as much as possible. 
Okay, so then she just gets into these different um, spreads that she has. Uh, and we will get into the card messages first with the, um, the return of Aphrodite card number 13. And here we go. <sighs> Temple, birth of the goddess, guidance, goddess energy, treated as sacred. She has come back to us, piercing us all with her sweetness and beauty. So goes the Homeric hymn to Aphrodite, an ancient rhapsody Recording encounters with this seaborn goddess who is friend to merfolk everywhere and to you if you so wish it. Aphrodite's story is fascinating, and when you receive this card, you are part of an enchanting tale that is being told in your life. You may have always doubted your ability to attract, yet when this card comes to you, it is as if the gracious Aphrodite's handmaidens are coming to greet you as you are rebirthed from the womb of the sea, and they adorn you with jewels and kisses, lavish you with pampering, and you will at last begin to believe in the power of your own gracefulness, your own sacred powers, your own allure and magnetic appeal. Aphrodite is seaborn, as were you, of the womb of your mother. And when she comes to you, you are being reminded that it is possible possible to be sexual without being in partnership or a formal marriage. She is returning to you to remind you you of the beauty and grace of laughter of delight of seeing all that is before you as wondrous and perfect in its own right delighting as she did in the ver variety of beings on the planet encouraging all to procreate make love sing and revel in life she is a sign of a return of, to sexual health to healthy and glorious self-love and self-esteem of a wish to be free for a time from marriage or conventional relationships a time to explore to delight to be sensual and to be free with no fear of retribution and um, I'm going to read the reverse just because I like to give that perspective. So the reverse meaning of this card. An unrealistic desire to be the only object of love or attract attraction in another's world. Jealousy and an inability to share. Feeling that to do so is to lose respect and authority. There may be a great deal of disapproval around your choices as a sensual being. People attempting to tell you who to love, what to love, when to love, how to be in a relationship, and so on. You are breaking ground and trading conformity for freedom to choose. And while in time you may choose marriage or hand fasting or a relationship or a partnership or a dalliance for now you refuse to categorize your choices in that way as you are exploring this will at times bring great distrust but remember for many thousands of years and to this very day we mermaids felt no pressure to be bound to one being only unless of course we desired this if you do not do not desire this do not you do not need to marry, conform, wed, or obey. You are a being of grace and fragrance. And as you change, your relationships will too. Ask the goddess Aphrodite for help. And it will usually be offered from her soft white hands. Oh, how sweet. Yeah, you know, we... <laughs> we can change and shift our idea of what it is that we want in solitude or relationships or being sexual or not and all of that. Um, there is no need to conform to anybody else's idea of what we should be in regards to that. But, but also to not reject our, our, innate nature at the same time 
Okay, and then divination. When Aphrodite comes to you from the sea, you are being reminded of your deep, delicious nature, the power of sensual desire, and the holiness of laughter and delight. There will be female friends who encourage you to remain free and to find out for yourself uh, what it is you want and who will praise you and assist you. It is time of being reborn into, into your sensual self and all that you are as a woman. Your yoni, your body, your breasts, your hips are all now greeted and claimed, reclaimed with love. You see that you do not walk sorry you see that you do walk in beauty and that many have seen you coming from afar and have desired you there is no sin in this aphrodite loved beauty too and knew how to share with other women gifting her magic belt to hera for a time to help her with her faithless husband zeus or sharing adonis for half the year with useful irresistible Paris bone. She is not the same as others. She does not wish to have and to hold. She wishes to experience, to love, to be filled again and again with all the beauty this world has to offer. But she never wishes for ownership. All is golden. Everybody is in love for a magical time because the goddess has returned. Oh my goodness. That is... Whew, that is intense. I felt that in like all my chakras practically. Oh my goodness. Yeah, really intense energy with Aphrodite and her um, energy here. And what she's bringing forward is to, is to basically not be confined to ideas of what we should be in as a female as a sensual creature um as a sexual being as a human or whatever else we may be uh is to really love ourselves and be authentic in what feels good i think is like the big message here what feels good not what we feel we should do and what feels good to others but what feels good to us okay awesome 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 messages there now let's go back a couple of pages to the number 10 card honor the masculine and again i find it fascinating <laughs> that these two cards came out together for my second reading with these cards i'm already absolutely in love with them here we go respecting men embracing the masculine divine the mermaids sing for many of the men of this world there is a sense of confusion shame and uncertainty about who they are meant to be if they are masculine powerful dominant and assertive they run the risk of being seen and experienced as controlling and cruel Many men feel that their sense of vulnerability and their emotional self has to be buried with an active self, a self who fixes, who knows what to do, who satisfies, and who makes sure all is well. The idea of masculinity has been corrupted and overtaken culturally, just as the concept of femininity femininity has been hurt too and we have many wounded heroes wounded goddesses wounded gods in our world this does none of us male female heterosexual every sexual homosexual any good at all it is necessary for us all to reclaim the sacred aspects of masculinity to recreate and encourage a healthy masculinity that is unique and in and encouraged supported and listened to we have so many stereotypes about how a man must behave and men are suffering perhaps in some ways even more so than women as they have been so disconnected from their true selves and the reversed meaning with this card following a rigid code of masculinity being unable to question the forms in which masculinity expresses itself refusing to shift and experiment with how the self can be expressed through masculinity 
equally judging men according to stereotypes and having equally rigid and inflexible ideas about how a man must behave, perform, and express himself. Bringing up boys to be men, yet not allowing them to be themselves. It is time for you to explore the concept of gender in a close relationship. Your notion of men, your experience of them, has been shaped in ways that are not as helpful as they could be. It is time to stop blaming men and start encouraging men to become the heroic sacred beings they are born to be. They were born with immense potential. The shape they have taken is not the shape of their soul. It is not necessary for you to cope or deal with abusive patterns, but it is important to know a person is acting out a stereotype, not their true soul essence as expressed through their masculinity. Rejection of the God, rejection of the possibility of the value of masculine force. Oh boy, this is a very, very heavy card actually. And divination. When this card comes to speak to you, if you are a man, it is time to understand, embrace, and truly honor the express expression of your masculinity. Think back to your childhood and youth before you were told who you are, what it is to be a man by your culture and by your family and through your schooling and relationships. Who are you? Consider the possibility that your own masculinity has been constructed to protect you. Perhaps some aspects of what you have been taught have created sadness, shame, and may even have ensured you missed out on a full and authentic experience as a man so far. Men are sensitive. Men are sacred. Men are gods. And the powerful insight of the Murpho can show you how to go deeply into the way your gender has shaped your destiny this lifetime. The merfolk encourage you to reshape it into a form that expresses who you truly are, not what you were taught to be. And that is the end of this, um, this, uh, cards information here and I wish that she would she says if you are a man and so she goes in this whole thing about if you are a man but she stops there she doesn't go into if but if you are a woman and you have see this in your you get this card or whatever but same thing here if you are a woman um this honor the masculine honor the masculine the divine masculine we but we have both no matter who we are and what gender we are born um we have the feminine and the masculine and i do like what she says here about how the men are hurting and maybe even more so than the women at this time because they've been so pulled from themselves it's like what are they and they're just trying to figure it out and in my in my coaching with with men there is a sense of confusion and um, especially about sexuality and, and how they are supposed to feel, what they're supposed to do, what is okay, what isn't okay. Just a lot of confusion there. And it's interesting. It doesn't happen with females, but it does happen with males where they get kind of imprinted with a certain type of, of um, attraction to things uh, when like those things first happen when they're young and they tend to to stay in that lane um and that is what will always like push their buttons sexually or crave affection but usually it's it's sexual or or um intimate in nature but a lot of times because it comes from them and when they're young and because our society wants to wants to just take children and make them men without letting them develop it confuses their their progress their evolution their growth and then it's and then it can it, the pendulum can swing really hard into um not being balanced with any feminine or really tapped into the feminine aspects of themselves but seeking it in like hunting of women and what i mean by that is always needing you know the conquest and sex and being sexually driven instead of instead of intimately or the the desire to connect intimately so 
this is just, I think, part of it. But as female, if you're a, a woman, um, and if you, it doesn't matter if it's about you know relation any type of relationship, um, if you have whatever men you have in your life, whether they're um, friends or family or lovers or spouses or whatever, to really try to send the the men in your life um, healing vibes of of balanced energy with their masculinity and that they can tap in with their with their feminine sides and and allow those waters to blend together and and that we hold space for them to do that and we let go of anger of of um of the sadness of being repressed by men uh, of the indiscretions brought upon women by men of being used by men still to this day this is going on and of course you know we get into you know the idea and the understanding of sex trafficking and all of that but that's not only you know men against women <laughs> we need to understand that as well but but we will shift the way that we see ourselves and see each other with the, with these energies and again it's just very interesting to me that these cards came out together the the return of aphrodite and honor the masculine it's it's about again feeling good and honoring that masculine energy and putting these the, all of these energies together so i hope that these messages have permeated your waters that you're letting them sink down that you're feeling this you know if you need to go back and listen again um sometimes i need to go back and read again or listen again and really just see what comes up for you with these two cards and this overall message that we got with the archetypes and these cards again it just feels like we are with the energy that i'm getting here with aphrodite and honor the masculine is this reshaping of how we feel with the divine masculine the divine feminine how we feel about love relationships the fluid nature of sexuality, um, what is okay, what is not okay. And in this day and age of everything being out there and and there really isn't a whole lot held back in certain ways and things, you know, it's just a very interesting time. It's so different from even 10, 15, 20 years ago. And in a lot of ways, this is good because barriers are being taken down. But at the same time, it's like, you know, letting the dam be complete, you know, opening up the dam completely and everything rushing out. It is like a tsunami to the senses and to the to the energy body to try to get some type of balance and equilibrium with all that we have in the world and so we have to take care of ourselves as far as what we're allowing to penetrate into our field what we're allowing um or not allowing ourselves to feel or what we have repressed what we feel shame for what we're um what we truly desire what turns us on what we um you know, without feeling that we have to bend or shape our ways to fit any sort of mold that society has built for us at the same time, we need to be independent and respectful and responsible to ourselves and how we see ourselves as human, as female, as male, or anything else so that we identify um, and but the bottom line, no matter if anybody's trans, gay, lesbian, um, pansexual, um, binary, whatever, um, there is the divine masculine, divine feminine in every body, and the best, uh, The, the best way for that energy to reside in the body is to be balanced and and in a neutral state, one not dominating the other. So you can think about many people in the world where you're like full, you see them, you're like totally feminine, you see them totally male and so much of this energy and, you know, what is presented to the world. But, you know, you could see a, a person and think, 
like oh my gosh you know it's like a female and she's absolutely beautiful like some pageant you know person or something just imagine some goddess woman and and it you just get this sense of everything feminine but then she, you know in an hour she could be under a hood of a car and fixing a, a an engine and you can see a super burly husky looking man and go wow that's the manliest man ever and then an hour later he can be you know in a in a little troop of little babies little kids just playing with them or in the kitchen baking a cake and both of these um scenarios or all of these scenarios are so appropriate for the human being, regardless of gender. We we are um, attracted to the rainbow of experiences as humans, but a lot of times, our gender and society and of the past at least has been, and the present has been dictated by like the story of what female is, what male is, what are our roles and. And it's been very cookie cutter and this is the way it's been. This is what you do. This is how you live, et cetera, et cetera. And we are in a time of shattering these molds and expectations. And instead of people living from the should state, they're living from an actual authentic state of being. But because it's been so repressed for so long, it's like, it's, it's like um, all of everything coming to get together like i said just like kind of chaotic energy all being um shot out into the into the ether and for us humans to just need to to kind of make sense of that while we're you know trying to get in balance with ourselves be true to ourselves and all that good stuff so if anything this energy that's coming through um at this time with the new moon with this new start and again if you did not do the new moon meditation please please do I found it really awesome that she talked about Aphrodite the Aphrodite card talked about um, being adorned with you know gifts from the sea and necklaces and whatever was said there because that is part of the meditation that we did and I just got this flash of oh is that what that was you know um so that was really interesting but but anyhow um just to have a sense of openness to balance to allow like the ocean energy the forest energy the starborn energy the one energy the the return of aphrodite and honor the masculine that all of this can come in and kind of to swirl around you and open up a portal a gate um, a, a channel where the where your intention to balance out to, um, for new beginnings for um, to be in a state of unknowing of the future to be connected to all to be in that one zone to be connected with that starborn energy and the, the destiny that we're meant to live in these lives to be an evolved an evolving human and specifically to do that is to connect to our bodies, is to connect to our sensuality and sexuality and how we relate with others, how we give and receive and how we're, we're, um, we love and, and we, um, interconnect our lives and our energy together and together as a collective having this be in our intention to see it from this point of view um i just find this so magical these cards that came out today the one the ocean the forest the starborn the return of aphrodite and honor the masculine is really painting us a picture that we have the opportunity in this stargate with this new moon after the the lunar eclipse full moon um a couple weeks ago to really allow for the resorting of of and the healing of our of our energy field in in a in the 
very specific way for the divine feminine and the divine masculine to allow for the new incoming energies to really you know penetrate to go into it without fear to connect to the divine to know that there is purpose and meaning and a destiny um, and all of that good stuff and and um, really putting this together with yesterday's messages and meditation this is just one big package of of gifts that we've been given through these oracles and I am really blessed and grateful to be um, in a position to be guided and to be here with these this body with arms and these hands and these eyes <laughs> and this this position to be able to to receive this and I'm grateful to to be um, guided to give this information like I said at the beginning here when it comes to this deck um, and this book, I've never been guided to read word for word the whole beginning of any Oracle guidebook before um, until this one. And I find it really purposeful and meaningful and deep and, and such a gift to have this. I, I want to thank Lucy Cavendish for being as connected as she is, for doing the work that she does. Um, like I said, her decks I have four of them and they're really a very magical and and I encourage you if you are somebody who who is seeking deeper connection um to expand yourself um by working with oracle decks and of course I really recommend hers and also the archetype deck by Kim Kranz um that I got two of now and anyway, I am going to say goodbye. This is long enough. I'm tired of talking and I need to rest. Thank you for being here and getting these messages with me and being open to receive and being a part of this portal of energy from the Merfolk channel through um, Lucy Cavendish and brought forward by myself, Infinity, today, the 11th of June. I hope you have a beautiful day. Um, rest of June or whenever it is that you listen to these messages uh, and whenever it is that you listen to these messages they are meant for you they are timeless messages and um, everything in divine right timing as we're meant to receive them so whether you're listening to this in a week a month a year two years or whenever these messages have been meant for you I probably should have said that at the top but nevertheless there it is uh, I'll see you again soon I love you so much infinite love and blessings until next time bye for now